We've got Brenda in Wigan. Are you there, Brenda, love? I am, yes, got it. Dinky do. How are you, dinky do, lovey? I'm, I'm a bit mad. I'm a bit mad. You're a bit mad? Well, we know that. <laughs> um, We've known that for years. We thought Brendan Wiggins a bit mad. You've not known me for so long. What do you mean? I only rang you and I lost Oh, you, you don't know how well I know you. Um, what I'm ringing up about is... You might be my Auntie Fanny. Yeah, I probably could be. Dance with your granny and your Auntie Fanny. Yeah. What's up, love? Well, I've been listening to this about um, beating women in different ways. Or not beating women, as the case is. Yeah, well, uh, I've, I've just heard that fella now about um, his wife hitting him with things, throwing things at him. And Chucking the dishes at him? Yeah, and an, another one earlier on. Um, well, my first husband, my husband one I've just lost, my first husband, he was a first class. He battered me for eight years. I lost a baby. He kicked me to death in a telephone box. But you see, all these years ago, there wasn't help like there is now. Why, why did he do that, do you think? When he had drink. He was a lunatic. Yeah, when he had drink. Yeah, but I mean, the drink was obviously just... Well, I, I suppose it could be two things. The chemistry could be affecting his brain. Mm -mm. But, you know, therefore he shouldn't have drunk. Nobody did. You know, so that's the first thing. The other thing is, why would he want to do that to you? Well, I think someday a, a young fella spawned an out about his young lady being on drugs. Yeah. And he was very jealous. He said himself, didn't he? Well, my first husband was like that but I never went outside never went out I never went yeah, out yeah but jealous me. jealous of what he thought you were a possession he must have uh, I had to go out where he uh, I used to have to stay in you know what I mean I had to stay in he went out I had to go to work he didn't go to work if I didn't get up for work when their alarm went off he used to pull me downstairs with me uh, and make me go to work and I put up with that for 8 years and uh, uh, why did you not just give, give him a doing couldn't Scott it because I was frightened of him. Right. Uh, it was fear. I was absolutely terrified. If anybody mentions his name now, and I was married to Malcolm, who's just died for 30 years, um, anybody who's mentioned his name, his skin used to crawl. Now, do you think he should have lost his, his bits and pieces? Definitely. It, 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 just it, in, into the hospital and snip, snip, and bobs your auntie? Yeah, but I, I do think now, um, if this would have been the same, like, if, if this was now instead of then, uh, there's more more help, I think, now. There's more help for women than there was then. Do you think there's less battered women now than there used to be then? Well, I think... It, I wouldn't say that. Do you think there's less violence? Yeah, because, I mean, I had two fractured schools. I lost a baby at eight months. The son where I've got, he nearly killed me when I was having him. I was in hospital two months. I nearly lost him. I nearly lost me all my... But surely he should have been imprisoned for that. Yeah, but he didn't. And the detectives came down, not just the police, the detectives. The final thing he did, um, he used the poker and he had a big, you know, a bull mastiff dog, Luke Fart. They're a big dog. And he came in one night for a drink. My son was in bed. Uh, he was only a baby. He was only a baby, my son. You see, his mother protected him. And uh, he came in one night and he locked the dog. There were little backyards then. You know, in a little backyard. Yeah, the yard at the back, though. Yeah, yeah. And then next thing, he just said something to me. And naturally enough, I had probably... I can't remember now because it's so long ago. I probably just said, what's wrong with you? And next thing, he kicked hell out of me. I ended up outside at front door. He had poker. He pulled all my hair out on one side. I crawled up to the street to his mother's, which she lived just at the top of the street from where we lived. When she saw me, she locked me in the, which she thought she'd locked me in her house and I couldn't get out because she didn't want people to see what he'd done. Anyway, I, I did get out. So I don't she, know how she, I did it, but I did get out. Now, sorry to interrupt, but did he, do you think that his father treated his mother the same way? No, my father treated my mother no. that way. No, but his father? Um, he did. I think in them days he did. I mean, we're going back, my mother's 80-odd. You know what I mean? In them days, I think they did. But uh, I don't think it's any excuse. I don't think his mother should have protected him. No, she certainly shouldn't. Well, I managed to get out that That was night. why I was wondering if her, hus her husband had done the same to her. Well, his father, he was the only one what was uh, with on my side. So, I don't know. And his sister... Oh, well, no, obviously not, then. Um, but I managed that night, and uh, this fella took me to my mother and dad. I've only got one brother and, and had my son. I couldn't get my son out. He wouldn't let me bring my son. Well, his mother wouldn't, I put it that way. Couldn't have my son. So I went to my father's, 
and my mother's, and my dad went up to the police station, which was only up road. I mean, I'm, like I say, I'm going back a long while now, nearly yeah. 40 years ago. And they came down and they got the ambulance. And when they... I, I must have been... So, well, I was. They thought I'd been mugged by a gang. And um, anyway... They said, if I didn't do anything, they would wash their hands of me. And I got divorced then. And then I thought, well, I got my son. Who so said they'd wash their hands of you? The police? The police, yeah, because it had happened so many times. Right. But not so, not as bad as that final, final one. You know what I mean? I do love, yes. So what, what happened was, I got my son, and uh, they wanted me to have photographs taken, you know, for court. Because, you see, you didn't get divorces like you do now. You got to go. I had to go to Liverpool court. And it went on for ages. Yeah, I, it, it was really degrading. They brought so many things up. I couldn't believe it. He didn't go to court. But I should have took criminal proceedings. And I didn't. I just wanted shot. I just didn't want... Well, you got shot, love, and got a good one. I did get a good one. But I'm going to tell you something now. This is how jealous and possessive he was. Go on. It was... Um, or oh, a long while, well, I'll say over 12 months after. Mm. Um, well, Malcolm, I always wanted to take me out when I first started work, and I didn't have, I wouldn't have nothing to do with him. He was married the second time. And he was coming home from work one day. Um, I was at home, we wasn't married. I was at home with my mother and dad and my son. And what they did, my husband and some of his mates, friends, he called them friends, I won't call them that. And when my husband was walking home from work, it was a winter's night, and it was a lonely place. And they all jumped on him and gave him a good going over. His mates? Yeah, so why should he be so jealous then? This is what I mean about this jealousy with our other young... Oh, his mates, his mates jumped on your second husband? Yeah. Oh, I thought yeah. you meant your first husband. No, they jumped on my second husband. So, I mean, he was bad news, wasn't he? Very bad news, love. Very A very difficult start for you, and well done for getting shot of all that. It took eight years for me to do it. Oh, it does take a while. Why do you think it takes so long? Well, I think, like I said then, there wasn't support like there is now. You know, you, you had to go to your parents. There's only your family then. There was no uh, battered wives' homes or anything like that. You had to go to your parents, you know what I mean? And, of course, everybody knew where your parents lived. Yeah, and they'd, like, there wasn't, like, I've heard now, I do know a few people, and it's not been half as what I put up with. And they'd just go, like, they'd get police and they'd go to these battered wives' homes and they'd get sorted and they'd get them solicitors and all this and that. But when I was working, Scott, I'm putting up with that. There was, you could only go to your parents, you know what I mean? I'm wondering if we should get a, a, a special domestic violence squad made up of women. Mm-mm, yeah, yeah. That would sober them up a bit, wouldn't it? Yeah, uh, people, I know, I, I, I've heard other, I mean, I know other women in the same position as me. In fact, he had a friend, and funnily enough, her husband and my first husband, you, they used to be bouncers on the door at Wigan, you know, they had doormen. Yeah. And me and Kathleen always said they used us for the punch bag. You know, they used us to learn how to take somebody else. Mm. And now Kathleen, she died, and we was both in Wigan Hospital together, and he'd done the same, not, well, not, we'd done the same to her as he'd done to me. But I think now th there's more support, but I know there must be a lot of your listeners gone through what I went through. Mm. I'm just wondering what's behind domestic violence, though, because none of it makes any sense. It doesn't, it doesn't. You know, it doesn't make any sense at all, and I just wonder what drives men to do it. Well, my son's 37 at Christmas. He has had girlfriends. He's lived with girls, but he won't settle down. And, in fact, last week somebody said to Michael, my son, uh, Michael, do you not think it's something to do with your dad? Mm. And he said, don't mention him. Don't want to know him. Now, my son was 30-year-old, and he was in a pub in Wigan. And this fella went up to him and he said, uh, you're Michael, aren't you? He said, yeah, I am. He said, I'm your dad. Now, he's never seen my son. I tell a lie, Scotty. He was five-year-old Michael when he last saw him. Mm. And he walked up to my son in a pub and said, I'm, I'm your dad. And he said, my dad's at home. Malcolm was still alive then. You're not my dad. My dad's at home. And he said, like, what he did, uh, he must have said something. He says, what I did to your mum, Michael, that's all in the past. He said, it's not in the past for me. Just keep out of my way. But I wonder if that's why Michael, because he's not violent. 
it's too soft. But pe- somebody, well, a few people have said, you think the reason why Michael doesn't settle down is because of his dad. But I don't think it is. He'll settle down when he's ready. Settle He'll down. settle when he's ready, love. Hey, yeah. it's, been, it's been great to talk to you. I know it's a very serious subject, but it's been great yeah. to talk to you. And thanks very much for your contribution, love. Yeah, there must be a lot of ladies left. Oh, they're, listen, they're all queuing up to get on, but um, yeah. it's been very, very interesting to hear from you. And I hope things are going better with you. Yeah, I'm not too bad. Yeah, did you did you do the chicken dinner again? Uh, no, I made potato pie and carrots and turnips. And Very good, were you? I'm getting the... Getting the get in there, book. love. Well done, eh? Hey, dinky do. Dinky do, Scott. And yeah, I, I, I had to ring you then, though. Oh, no, you ring me any time, love. No problem. Right, thank you. God Good bless, night, love. God bless. Night, night, darling. Night, night. What a lovely lady. Scotty McClue's Late Night Phone-In. Have you phoned yet? Dinky do.